Hi everyone, my name is Jesse Houghton and I'm a product manager for Visual Studio. Today I'm super, super excited to share all of the awesome updates we have available in 17.8 general availability as well as 17.9 preview one. Now, I couldn't cover all of them in a short amount of time, but I did want to leave you with some of the major highlights. We've got full.NET 8 support. I'm super excited about that, as well as the new extension manager and extensibility SDK is another one of my favorites. But we couldn't have made any of these awesome features without community support. So what that means is joining the conversation on developer community, sharing your bug reports and your suggestion and feedback tickets so that we know exactly what are the right things that are going to make Visual Studio the best experience for you. So I'll take it away with a little bit of demo. And here I have my Visual Studio in dark mode. And I've heard that dark mode is actually not the best for presentations because it might come across on a recording not as well. So let me go ahead and navigate to Tools and then Top Level Menu, and I'll click Theme. And here, we're used to seeing just dark, light, and blue theme. But as of 17.9 Preview 1, you get all of these tinted theme options. So these are our response to some developers really caring about that blue theme being a mix of light and dark and coming with the whole UI refresh that Visual Studio has been working on to give you a little bit of space, a little bit of breathing room, and modernizing the IDE, we wanted to give you more customization here. So if I click Mystical Forest, for example, I get that great green tint to complement kind of the dark mode in my editor. And then I'll go ahead and switch to a light mode for the rest of this presentation. So Cool Breeze is going to be something that's going to look very similar to the old blue theme. But you'll notice we've got a little bit of extra breathing room in some of the menu bars. And these are to address feedback that we've gotten that allows Visual Studio to avoid you clicking on the wrong thing uh, and, and making it easier to use overall. So super excited about the new UI. I think it looks really great. And let's focus in on something in the editor now. I'm working on this screen grab constructor. And this is going to take a recording of what's going on on my screen. So I want to make sure that my output and my options path is not going to be invalid. So I'm adding this exception handling right here. But you'll notice, oops, I forgot to add quotes around my exception message. So I'll go ahead and add quotes there. And normally, I would you know, add the quote key and have to navigate to the end of the line and add the other quote key. That's a couple of extra gestures that maybe I don't need. Uh, to make Visual Studio a little bit more consistent with other IDEs, right now, if you click or highlight the text that you want, you can just click the quote. And that's going to surround the text uh, and not delete the text by accident as it had done before. This is a small but mighty quality of life issue that prevents me from moving my hand away from the keyboard. It allows me to stay productive. And it's these kinds of little incremental improvements that we think are really going to benefit folks over the long run. This one is available in 17.9 Preview 1. So definitely check that out. Next up, this was the last thing I wanted to do uh, in this commit message. So I'll go over to my commit window. And actually, let me zoom in a little bit up here so it's easier to see. If you're anything like me, at the end of a good coding session, I've figured out all the problems, or I just want to make a, a nice save point of my work, the last thing I really care about is writing that really detailed and descriptive commit message. I know that it's going to benefit my team and even future me when I'm looking back at the Git history. But oftentimes, I might be just writing something like update one or related to this feature. And it's not something that's actually going to make it easier for my team to review my code or for anybody looking at my code over time to understand what happened. So instead of me spending the time to come up with those commit messages, let me go ahead and use Copilot. Here, Copilot is going to look at the diffs that were generated from my current commit to my previous one. And it's going to give me a description, uh, first a high-level summary of the most important changes. And then it's going to give me an enumerated list of all of the changes that occurred in that line. So it's saying that I have new namespaces that were included. And those were included when I went ahead and pasted that exception. And it's also talking to me about that new check that was added to make sure that the output path property was successfully not null or empty. This is way more than I would write and is actually going to make it a lot easier to search through my Git history in the future. 
And all I have to do is then review the code and make sure that I want that AI suggestion. I'll go ahead and say that this is uh, to complete my screen grab class. And I'll use the GitHub issue search here um, to make sure that I'm referencing the right class. Perfect. And now I'm ready to commit. And that was so much easier with the help of Copilot to generate that commit message for me. Um, that's available in 17.9 Preview 1, uh, available with GitHub Copilot chat. So make sure that you're, you're keeping up with those downloads. The next thing I want to share is once I've done that commit, I'm ready to create my pull request. So let me get out of the zoomed in mode. And I've got this option now to create my pull request either in Visual Studio or to create it in the browser. Now, prior, prior to 17.8 GA, I was only able to create that pull request in the browser. And oftentimes, if my next task was also in Visual Studio, I had to deal with that annoying context switch of jumping to the browser to just type in a couple fields and then jump back to Visual Studio. Now, we wanted to make that specific flow a lot more smooth, so we added that option to create in Visual Studio. And this is going to open up the new pull request uh, creation window. So I have the diff view, and you'll notice that the summary view is turned on. So this actually allows me to focus in on only the changes in my code. I don't have to do a whole bunch of scrolling to get from change to change. And if I want a little bit more context, I can just open up the hidden lines information that's present between each of those changes. Let's finish up this pull request by adding my title. And I already wrote a detailed description here to save time. Um, and you'll notice that I'm using some markdown syntax here to make my description have a little bit of formatting. And I can actually preview that in the screen right here. So I can be writing my description, and I can be looking at my changes all at the same time and preview that very well and even use things like checkboxes to make sure that my description is very clear and easy for my teammates to use. Now that I have those all set up, I can add my reviewers. That's an example one there. And I can go ahead and create that pull request. So now that it's successfully created, I know I'm ready to head off onto my next task within Visual Studio. And I didn't have to leave the IDE to get that work done. And that next task is going to be in our screen grab class. So this next thing I want to talk about has to do with one of the two hardest problems in computer science. And I'm not trying to solve cache and validation today. I'm talking about naming things. So, we all know that Visual Studio has great support for if you click on this and you right click or use the keyboard shortcut, which is Control R, Control R, you get this awesome rename support. And that's going to look across all of your files and make sure that any place that you used that item or entity is that it's going to get replaced with the new name that you wanted. But that's not solving the problem of coming up with a name that's concise and expressive and helps you understand what that entity is doing in your code. So what if I clicked on it and I got some great suggestions from Copilot? You can see that they're generating here. And screen grab is not very, you know, it doesn't tell you exactly what the screen grab class is doing, which is recording your screen. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this great suggestion from Copilot, which is screen capture recorder. That's going to be a lot more communicative to folks looking at my code. And it's more consistent with the rest of my code base. I have a secondary file here that also used that class. So you can see that that got updated in there as well. That same awesome support is going to work, uh, but just with a little bit of help from Copilot to give you those great suggestions. And this one's also available in 17.9 Preview 1. Let's go ahead and finish the loop, though, here. I've got this comment that still uses the old name. and if I wanted to replace all of the instances of this comment, I might use the find and replace. Um, but I have a unique example here, which is actually not so unique because we've, got, um, we've gotten a lot of feedback that this new feature is something that folks have been looking forward to. And it's that folks want to rename options that have different 
casing styles. So this one here is in camel case, but our comment over here was all in lower case. And if I wanted to maintain that casing style and keep that level of consistency with my documentation and my code, I would have to do that find and replace operation line by line to make sure that that casing is consistent. But with our new case preserve, I can go ahead and turn on this option. I'll zoom in so that you can see. And that is going to allow me to specify the entity name that I want to replace it with. So we're going with screen capture recorder. And as long as I specify that new name with some casing style that kind of differentiates between each of the words, I can just replace all in my open documents in this case. And it's going to change it to the casing style that it already had. So it's going to preserve that casing style and making it a lot easier to perform those easy, those quick little changes and really improve the quality of life. So here it changed that to all lowercase. And then in my other file, I maintain that casing style where I wanted something different than the name of the class to represent an actual entity of that class. So that was all of the features that I wanted to share, some of my favorite little editing tricks and things that are coming from version control from 17.8 as well as 17.9 preview one. Remember to get all of these updates and to try out these things, you need to download the latest versions of Visual Studio as well as the preview versions. And that's where we get all of that awesome feedback from you all. So definitely download those versions and let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.